This is the Dr. Will Lambert Podcast, episode number 119, originally recorded, well, actually, all throughout the year of 2019. This is the best of, worst of, maybe middle of the pack of portions of all the podcasts that we've done during the year of 2019 here for in just one big massive load and i will tell you i'm not quite sure i've listened to practically every single podcast that we've done during the 2019 year i don't know how long this is going to be but so far as i've compiled it i've really enjoyed it so please stay tuned for the very end of the podcast where I guess I might have some thoughts in regarding some other things. Also, just FYI, keep in mind that there this was kind of this was planned, but the numbering is kind of a little bit off. I was planning on doing a, I guess you could say Skyfall, you know, series twelve, part one, part two, uh, discussion regarding that. But because of certain things that have happened so far in this uh, holiday season, I have not been able to get that done. And I think I'm going to be about a week late for that. If you're listening to this a little bit later, good for you. You've probably already seen it. And probably podcast number 121 will uh, take that into um, complete retrospect. No, minus Liam and Humphrey. But uh, please enjoy this podcast. It has been a delightful year. It contains uh, many of our best moments, our worst moments, and some of our middle of the pack moments where, you know, I I decided to include not only our silliness, but also some of our yelliness, as well as some of our actually doing a podcast moments. So you have every single portion of uh, the Dr. Will Amber podcast in this best of in uh, episode number 119, which I guess you could say is fitting since it consists of the year of 2019. So that being said, if you could, however you listen to the podcast, Apple Podcasts, Pod Directory, TuneIn, Spotify, Stitcher, uh, I think that's it. I, I'm going to actually, 2020, I am actually going to be trying to do some sort of YouTube channel because I feel as though that could actually be an additional way of getting comments and replying to listeners as well, too. I'm trying to figure out what that would look like because I will say we're not going to be recording our camera feed just because I'm not 100% sure how to compile all of that at this moment. But uh, you know what? Maybe that will be a future endeavor that we'll consider. Also, keep in mind, um, as you listen to this podcast, notice how many times that we do kind of reference some sort of uh, horrible thing that we could force upon one another. This is kind of actually goes into a proposal that I'm working on for uh, furthering the, the podcast with some sort of Patreon page or you know paid extra type thing. So just keep that in mind. It is not all finalized yet. Actually, we're not even close to being finalized. But you know, I do. Ha we do have some ideas that are very exciting for the podcast for 2020 and the years to come, or until we just decide to get we're all tired of the podcast and then we stop. So um, thank you for listening and downloading, and enjoy the best of, the worst of, or just the middle of the road of portions of the 2019 Dr. Who Lambert podcast. Speaking of new who being re represented, what? Let, let's take a step back. The whole of series 11 is done. Jodie Whittaker's first season as a doctor is complete. We've had 10 episodes plus the, uh, not Christmas special, the New, New Year's Year special. special. What are our, I'd like to get your th raw thoughts on series 11 so far. For me, personally, I really enjoyed it. You know, it had it, some stories perhaps weren't as good as others, but what I liked was the fact that, unlike Stephen Moffat, the series, you know, was, you know, more straightforward. There wasn't all this silly, overcomplicated nonsense that he would write in for no apparent reason. You know, the stories, to me, were just more, well, proper Doctor Who. They, they In a way, they were very reminiscent for me of the 60s who, um, you know, the William Hartnell era, you know, three companions being the obvious one, but also the fact that historicals 
and it was very much you know exploring whereas with sort of Moffat's era it was very much just you really didn't know where you were with half of the stories I found whereas the stories here were much more straightforward and I found for me personally anyway it's a lot more enjoyable I thought Jodie Whittaker was a fantastic doctor I like her companions granted I think Ryan is the weakest of the three but still you know so me I, I think it's pretty good personally for me mm, mm, meh I like Jodie Whittaker in the role I don't feel at this point in time that the writers have a handle on her actual doctor though she's a bit kind of all over the place with her moral compass she wasn't really given a massive moral dilemma which i think she should have been given you know if you consider like tom baker and genesis for example i feel the writing was kind of average yeah there was some standout episodes the doctor for my liking didn't get enough storyline or screen time it was still kind of about the companions rather than her i don't think she was you know as a new incarnation was ex was explored enough uh, i like the fact you know that, that, that there was three companions you know it was a nice harken back to you know ian susan and barbara again i agree with humphrey ryan definitely is the weakest and he needs to go <laughs> like last week i find his acting very wooden he may look animated on the screen but he sounds like he's just reading off a bloody tax form yaz and graham i think have more of a rapport anyway graham was definitely the standout companion out of all three and is it me or has the time war just been forgotten not only that but i mean what was it capaldi's doctor was trying to find gallifrey and then Jesus. no mention whatsoever and it just like i mean that was the the you know, sole purpose when matt smith left was he finally found gallifrey mm. the 12th doctor was constantly trying to figure discover where it was and then we just had 10 standalone stories that may well change in the next series though and and here's my question to you brett when did the time war end? Did the time war end in Day of the Doctor? Or did the time war end in Hell Bent? I think the time war ended in Day of the Doctor because it, the, again, Gallifrey was sucked into a pocket dimension. That pocket dimension, which essentially prevented it from total annihilation from the, the Daleks, it prevented it from. It you know it was just mm. moved essentially. So, but then, but then, really, the, the Daleks have won because the Daleks are back in the show. So, what what happens now? Well, the, the the hardest thing about the Daleks, though, and to think about this, and I, I would love to get your opinions regarding the Doctor Who resol uh, resolution because mm. I had massive complaints about that story. But regarding the Daleks, is there? It's they're literally all over the place. You ha when you think back to the new series, you know, supposedly there's a time, the Great Time War, where the Daleks and the the Time Lords were basically destroyed, ended up destroying themselves. Supposedly, mm -hmm. there's only one Dalek left. It, it, it's a really hard episode to figure out what it's called. You know, Dalek, and then you have that. Then you have the Emperor, you know, using what is it, satellite. Five, um, yeah, mm. and turning the contestants into Daleks. Then you have the army of ghosts, which had all those Daleks that were put in that in the void, mm. which were actual proper Daleks. Daleks. Mm. You have uh, the so um, yeah. I, I didn't mind resolution. The only gripe I had with that episode was I feel Ryan's dad should have died at the end. Actually, no. So did I. I, actually, fact, actually, I was waiting actually, for no. both Ryan's dad. In fact, and somebody Ryan put this die. on Twitter. They said if RTD was uh, writing this, both Ryan and Ryan's dad would have been sucked out into that. And sun. that's what should have happened. <laughs> exactly. They should have had a you know a, a a kind of final you know 
deep look into each other's eyes, holding hands as they got sucked into the sun. I thought that would have been fantastic. Mm -hmm. However, I will say, I don't know if you caught this, but Mm -hmm. I caught this. Ryan essentially apologized to all of the fans in Doctor Who for being a lousy companion. Would you like to hear his apology to all the fans for being such a horrible companion? Uh, Sure. Okay. I'm sorry. (laughs) I've messed up. (laughs) (laughs) Really? (laughs) I let you down. And I'm sorry. See? (laughs) (laughs) He apologized. Mm -hmm. You know what? Thank you. It takes a big man to apologize for being <laughs> a lousy companion. And you know what? I appreciate that. Uh, it's still muffled all, uh, to all hell, though. Is it me, or, or does he like, not open his mouth in that entire scene? <laughs> what? Sorry, I didn't, think, I didn't quite catch that, Ryan. Ye <laughs> <laughs> uh, gods. Uh. So just out of curiosity, so um, I, I pulled this up because I sent this to you uh, over Christmas. This uh, one gentleman I really enjoy following on Twitter is uh, Doctor Who at Time Space. He's been posing lots of questions. In fact, mm. he's irked a lot of people because he's posted stuff like, what is your least favorite episode or whatever? And people are just like, oh, I don't think that you should say least favorite because that basically means that the writing was was subpar and uh, the, the people didn't do a good job. It's just like, well, you know what? Sometimes people don't do a good job. Exactly. That's it's saying like, that the, know, the costume you know, design did there's it. 55, you know, there's 55 years worth of Doctor Who episodes. You know, there's going to be gold and there's going to be shit. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. let's no, weed I out agree. the shit from the gold. Do you know what I mean? And at least to me, and I sent this to you, and I've been trying to find your response to this, but the, the question was raised is what new Who series... Rank the new Who series from best to worst. And mine was, so going from best to worst, I went series 4, 1, 5, 10, 3, 9, 11. And then underneath 11, I put the second season 6, 7, 8 in that order. I did actually respond to that one. Yeah, I did. I'm, I've been trying to find your response to that one. But I don't know. I, I, I To me personally, again, where I put... Series 11 is not the bottom of the barrel. However, many fans, when they replied to this, did put 11 at the bottom of the barrel. And I don't think that is fair at all. And I feel as though people are just jumping on the bandwagon of Jodie Whittaker was... I mean, if you looked at Twitter, I mean, I tweeted you like about the the recording of this podcast about uh, how negative how further negative people have gotten since our podcast on fans toxicity Uh and how people basically are saying it's not that Jodie Wicker is a bad actor. She was miscast, which I don't agree with. How can you miscast somebody? I don't know. I, I, I don't agree. Now, Ryan being a companion, that's a mistake, not a miscast or maybe the guy who played him I, 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 that's the one I'm trying to figure out. Hmm. Is it the actor or is it the character? I have the same belief regarding the War Master box set that I still do. I personally believe the first box set was dull and uninspiring. And at the time, if you want to go back and listen to it, I basically said I'm rooting for no further box sets. War Master, I've listened to two and a half episodes, only the good. If they don't do another box set, I think I'm fine with that. It was an okay adventure, but it never really gripped me that much. Yeah, we didn't finish it, so can't really. So, post production update. This is February eighth, two thousand eighteen. I have listened to the Warmaster box set, all four episodes, and I stand by my original opinion of kind of hoping that we don't see a second box set. Not that interesting, and also still stand by that. The Unbound Doctor in the Unbound Universe, because that's what it's called, is still not part of canon. It is. So here we go. So we have three more. I listened to this one. I found Master of Callus even more dull 
than before. In fact, I was pretty set fast that I was not going to purchase box set three. And then my brain went, oh, but he meets the eighth doctor. And I was like, oh, come on. <laughs> Crap! I, must admit, I go. In... You B big finish. You suck. You absolutely suck. Because I was about done. I was done with Ravenous because mm. of that. The I, because Ravenous two to me personally sucked. And I was like, I'm done with Ravenous. I'm. I don't care how this turns out. And then they're like, Oh, by the way, Charlotte Pods come back. I, Crap! <laughs> <laughs> you ah. Oh. <laughs> suck, big finish. You absolutely <laughs> suck. Uh, I was good. I was done with the War Master, and then you pull me in with that. I was done with Ravenous, and you pull me in with that. <sighs> <sighs> so yeah, I pre-ordered both of them, and <sighs> <laughs> yes. yeah. Um, and I must admit, well. Should we should we actually move on to uh, Diary of River Song because we've just been spoken about yes. the War Master? Uh, Ooh, because actually, yes. I must admit, the I was surprised at the ending of, of War Master uh, of what, 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 uh, Diary of River Song <laughs> with, with with the the War Master in it because he is turning into a really good incarnation. Yes. So me. well, let, let's go to that. So in so we're now in 2019. Yay! Um, so disc to discuss the, the Diary of River Song series five. I thought that was, that was the best story, that one. Because that was the one with Velistra, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yes. Yes. Do you like uh, Doom Coalition, Brett? Uh, yes and no. Like, I will say I like Doom Coalition a lot more so far than Ravenous. But mm. like the, the first box set of Doom Coalition, I really enjoyed a lot. Uh, see, I, I know, know yeah the, you didn't be, like because the, of the mastering uh -huh. issues it but really it did it, you know what it just it, it the story is still fantastic you know the, you, you, I, here, here's a interesting perspective you have a hard time liking doom coalition one because of the mastering but you want people at times to look past the special effects for classic doctor who <laughs> because of the visuals yeah, because there was no. But the difference was, dude, there was no excuse for uh, the for the audio in that release. But you're missing. You know what the I mean? You know, I don't because you're missing. No, no I'm no, I'm not. No, because... you you are. You, you're you're missing the point because the no. it, the the stories are still enjoyable and amazing yeah but brett if but I, I, no I, no, I'm, no no I'm no you no, no, if i've no, got to get up no. every every five minutes to change the volume well, up I, and down I, it, it's it's, fairness, it's gonna detract sorry in fairness i didn't actually notice any mastering issues in box set one mm. i don't know they're, but, they're definitely there because i'm not the first you want people to, to look past the 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 special effects but you can't look past some of the audio effects Yes, because it's an audio medium. That's the difference. But it, but it doesn't change it's purely the, audio. No, it, no. It, I, I not, don't understand. It doesn't change the plot of the story at all. I know, and I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not denying that. But you're know, saying I'm that not. it is that box set one is not good because of the mastering. That would be like saying I don't like the Web Planet yeah. because it is lame, because of the weird no, pantomime. I've, no, I'm not saying that the box set one wasn't good. I want to like it. The stories are good. I'm saying I do, I can't like it. I can't listen to it because the the mastering levels are so off and so way off that it's unlistenable because it's annoying because I can't. I want to enjoy the stories, but because I'm up and down every five, every five minutes, adjusting the volume up and back down because it's too loud and too quiet. It I can't immerse myself in the story fully because I'm having to sort out the volume. You see my point. So I'm not. I'm not saying the stories are crap because they're no, not. But, they are good but stories. That, but that's how you always phrase it. I don't like it because of the mastering. You never say the stories are good. The mastering is bad. You just go out and say the mastering is bad. Hence, is. the stories are bad. I've never heard you once say that box set one of Doom Coalition was the least bit enjoyable. Well, they, well, there you go. I've, ex I've explained myself. They, well, you know, I have said why now. Well, you know, why I don't like it. It's not because of the stories. It's because of the mastering. I have enjoyed uh, uh, Doom Coalition. 
Mm-hmm. See, Dune Coalition Two was 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 bad because the stories were general. Oh were yeah, genu- generally Dune Coalition Two was like forgettable. I mean, I yeah. wish it could be. I I could get my twenty back for that one. I mean, like I said to Humphrey before, the the domain of the Vord story that was a good Vord story. Yes. Um, the Dune Coalition Two story had promise. It just wasn't very well executed. I just, I love the TARDIS team of the Doctor, Liv and Helen. They just work so well together because they're all so different in many ways. So I think it's a really interesting team. Yeah, that'll change in Ravenous. <laughs> just say, <laughs> don't, it... don't get used to the TARDIS dynamic. That's all I'm going to say. What? Um, oh, and talking of the Doctor and Unit, actually... Mm. Mm, your argument about canon and parallel universes and things and and Inferno not being canon. No, I didn't say um, Inferno Inferno wasn't canon. Which you did. No, I didn't. Which you did. I did not. Yes. Would you like to me to replay <laughs> the the um uh the podcast that I got that from? Because I will. I, I I said it. It's canon. I said here's what's canon. The Centaurum project was kind of fun. And then the last one, False Negative. Ooh. <coughs> that was good with the uh, Parallel Universe. Ah, yeah, but it didn't happen. Because well, it's a Parallel Inferno Universe. Inferno happened. Inferno happened. I'll, I'll, I acknowledge that. Mm. Still, 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 not, still not getting your logic about the whole thing. No, it's so. it, it, the first, like, ten minutes of inferno where he's doing that and then he goes and then what's canon and when he comes back and he says hey that man's evil and he's going to kill us all that's canon all the stuff in between is not canon it is because the prime ords are going to be in the third doctor no uh, that doesn't that doesn't mean that this is canon it just means that the continuation of the prime ords is going on forward it does not mean that all that stuff in between unless they were able to jump from that universe which exploded to our universe well that, obviously uh, well, uh, well uh, obviously that they have because uh, how else could they have, have escaped uh, it only takes one because to survive that's, because that's what i'm because that, that that's 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 what I, i'm assuming because that universe got destroyed so. it, only t- it only takes one to survive Oh well, yeah, so therefore it's canon because you know. N- no, otherwise it wouldn't it, be canon because yeah. because how else would you know how they came about? If 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 we take your logic, then you're like mm? the, 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 the who, 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 who are these primals? In, where, 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 where have they come no, from? No, no, no. The, the 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 evil mad scientist who's trying to drill to the center of the earth. He was morphing into one of the primoids. He they, he they were he was stopped. He was transforming all the way through. Uh, the story on the alternate non-canon universe, but he was also doing the same thing in this universe. That Earth was destroyed. Primoids still could, can be a thing, but that universe, all the stuff in between the center of the first 10 minutes of episode one and like the last 20 minutes of episode seven, all that stuff in between, not canon. So then are you classing... Uh... The mirror universe with the Star Trek episodes of why uh, why, Enterprise. Why why, why are you bringing yeah um, mirror mirror yeah where there's an evil Spock and an evil Kirk and also and also Voyager. What does that what does that have to do with Doctor Who? And I'm trying to prove your point in regards canon and universes. So, at what point in time did uh, evil Spock transcend the timeline and strangle Chekhov to death? Yeah. It well, didn't that, happen. With... It was a story. Again, it's it, yeah. We don't have to. It 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 just because it didn't happen canon wise doesn't mean it's an enjoyable story. It is an enjoyable story. Mirror Mirror is an enjoyable story. Doesn't mean that it is canon. It is just oh, we met some people that looked like us, and except they were our exact opposite, and then we left. But it is, why would it not be canon? But be, again, you're you're confusing a plot of a story with canon. Canon and plot are not the same thing. Plot is what makes the whole story kind of 
go along with uh, <laughs> from beginning to end. There is a, generally a problem, which yes, is also, I know which is called plot, plot is, right? is, and canon complete. is all the things that make up that universe, not the Mirror Mirror universe, not the <clears throat> Inferno yes, universe. Yes, it makes up the it makes up the universe. No, it does not. It, no, it does it's not. Part of the show. We could make a whole podcast <laughs> about these two arguing. It's brilliant. <laughs> Yeah, but your point is completely and utterly flawed. It really is. Really? Because I find like, yours yeah. <laughs> no, immensely you're flawed. The <laughs> point. I, I, I'm going to prove, I'm gonna prove a Who, point about Doctor the canonism of about Doctor Who, and, and I'm going you know, to use go... uh, Terra Hawks to, to... I mean, that's just... Uh, come on. <laughs> no, come on. I mean, so then, surely by your logic again... Uh, you know, Age of Steel and 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 all that is not canon because it doesn't take place in <clears throat> quote unquote the prime freaking universe. Yes. And then what about the Divergent universe but story? In yeah, Age, so in Age of again, in Age canon. of Steel, you have the bleeding <laughs> into our universe. When it bleeds in, that's when it becomes canon. Up until that point, it was just a plot of a story. Until it bled into our universe with the army of ghosts and with uh, Rose transcending but, that universe in that 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 transcends it. Would you please tell me? You, please tell me. Besides character development, please tell me. Besides character development, at what point does the Inferno universe that is destroyed make our universe any different? Minus character development. <clears throat> Just because you can't see everything that goes on in the universe doesn't mean that stuff doesn't happen. It's like the uh, you know the 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 um what's it called the, the uh thingy principle. You know, the, uh, because you observe it, therefore it changes, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So it, yeah, and anyway, um, you can't tell me that. If you didn't watch Age of Steel and, uh, uh, you know, you, you ignore the character development of the characters, you know, Rose, Mickey, etc., and all that, you'd be at a loss by Army of Ghosts because you wouldn't have a frigging clue what had gone on. So, therefore, you need to watch those stories to understand what's going I on with the characters. didn't say that, again, if Age of Steel was a standalone and they never bled over into the but Army of Ghosts, that whole story... A, a fun story to bring back the Cybermen in would not be yeah. canon in the Doctor Who universe because those Cybermen ended right there. But you know what? Army of Ghosts happened. Torchwood uh, shooting a laser at, to a, a thing at the Canary Wharf or whatever, opening up that universe, letting it bleed in there. That allowed it to be canon. What what point in Inferno <clears throat> did that happen? No point. Again, well, no, because it's a different story. Uh, oh, we didn't, okay. We, we, we didn't. We didn't. We see, didn't have bloody lasers being pointed at gaps in reality and whatever. See, I think you uh, realize that I am right, but you just no, don't want to admit you are that really you're not wrong. right. <laughs> your your concept of canon is 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 no. It, sorry, it's a show about time travel. It's a show about a ship that can freaking transcend universes as well as time therefore wait whatever whatever happens will still be canon because it's happening to Again, those characters how because it's, how did the tardis because... get to the age of steel universe it wasn't supposed to happen how no, did the doctor happen, get to did. the inferno universe how where was, it was destroyed how did the it was an accident it did... wasn't supposed to happen they were stranded there for a long long time and they were trying to get back the whole time. It How is, did the TARDIS get to the land of fiction? Wasn't going to happen, but it did. The the what was it? The mind robber dude. He was the one that pulled him in because he pulled him in. In fact, the, uh, because in further um, missing adventures, I believe the uh, the mind robber the the whole thing. He is in further episodes, which does make that canon. So if you would like to. Uh, find a source where the interworkings of the Inferno universe bled into our universe, and therefore it's going to in the uh, it's, um, it's not it's going, going to, to no, in the third Doctor Adventures in no, May. No, it is, not. Right now, it, is. it is not. It is not. No, it won't. Just because, again, just because the Doctor stopped them from essentially destroying the Earth doesn't mean that they don't exist. How how else in Torchwood? 
with the, the, the new box set that's coming out, or not the box set, the series, that the, the Green Death is able to come back. They, they killed all of those gigantic mutated maggots. But you know what? If one survives, it's, yeah. it, it continues on. If one well, part... Okay. Well, 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 okay, then well, we'll see in May and see yeah. if, if, if... And I will be and, proven and, right, and, 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 and if, I would like an if, apology and, and, at and that if, time. If, if the, the primoids come over from the parallel, parallel universe or whatever, or, or they go to the parallel universe... Then will you accept that you are actually wrong and that, you know... No, at that point in time, I will canon... accept that the, the Inferno things that happened in between that time would be canon, but it's not going to happen. And at that time, you will say, mm. Brett, you were right. I was wrong. That part is not canon. And I'm, no. I'm, I, I, no, I I'm bow not, at your greatness. Mm. <laughs> point. <laughs> 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 What's the improvement? <laughs> you, my dear, you. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, Humphrey has regenerated and uh, got a same mic as now both myself and Brett, so we all sound the same. Yes. Anyway, yeah, my regeneration master. Hashtag sponsor. I know. Come on, Road, give us money. Give us money. Um, <laughs> So, in, in this podcast, we are going to be... Well, I don't know how long this podcast is going to be, because... hundred. No, I didn't think it would get past five, let alone a hundred. <laughs> well, one of the things that amazes so. me is out of the first four months of 2019, every month except for one, we've had over a thousand downloads. I mean, have we, so, have, have we really got that, that, many, that many subscribers? Well, I'm not sure about subscribers, but all I can say for is the people that are constantly downloading episodes, so I can uh, at least check that. And I will say, out of all the months so far of 2019, again, three of the four months, over a thousand downloads, the only month, February. I mean, what were people doing? Just making out instead of listening to podcasts? However, I will say... Um, I'm not blaming you for the least. I wish I had a girlfriend to be able to experience that routinely. So, um, <laughs> well, and then you have River who goes throughout space trying to find uh, what her, her body or something like that. I just, I, I feel as though she should not be coming back. I don't like this at all. I know it, being nitpicky again, but I just think that bringing Katarina back, just leave her alone. She's dead. She will always be dead because it would. <sighs> no, I think I think they said that. I think she said she was taken at, at the brink of death, wasn't she? And put into. Oh, if you listen to the clip, it, um, she was taken at the brink of death. Oh, she was saved at the brink That's of right. death. Well, that doesn't mean that you should. I mean, again, mm. I, I th and yes, um, it says that you know that yeah, she encapsulated her because she, yes, she wanted to give her a, a you know. Um, a decent, decent memorial buried or whatever, because the doctor couldn't come back for her. Um, and in her last moments, she saves the companions. <sighs> so that that that's her that's her final thing, which you know I thought I thought was quite cool. No, I what they're, what they're doing, what they're doing, yeah, they're bringing her back. But the thing is, but we but we know how. But this this is the thing. I don't think the story is about Katarina in that sense because we 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 know now how how it's going to have to end. She's going to have to end. It's going to have to end by her sacrificing herself. What's going to happen is the second Doctor is going to run into the first Doctor with Katarina at that point, and the second Doctor's like, "Well, oh, um, you know, she's going to die. She has to die," and the first Doctor is going to be like, "No, she, you know," and is going to try and save her. So that's what the story is going to be about. It isn't going to be about Katarina. It's more about the feud between the first and second doctors because of that. That's what that's what you're missing, oh, no. which is quite interesting. Uh, I, I think. don't think that is interesting at all. Why? I think that's quite interesting. Well, I mean, what are they going to do? I mean, she yeah. cannot survive. We know she mm. cannot survive. She's there. She's she was saved at the brink. You're right. She's saved at the brink of death by River Song. You know, what right does she have to do that? She sacrificed herself. That just totally, totally ruins what she did in the Daleks' master plan. Totally. And 
to bring her back like this only to have her return. Mm. I mean, the only thing that she could basically have to do is the, the, the second doctor is going to have to like make sure that she dies. She's, he's going to make have to make sure he kills her or something. I don't think he. I don't think he's going to kill her. Obviously, because the, the doctor doesn't kill. Well, that's not true. Whitaker, uh, Jodie Whittaker thing. No, that's not true. I mean, Colin yeah, Baker. But I mean, I mean Colin Baker dis- destroyed, killed a whole bunch yeah. of Cybermen in the TARDIS console room. Yeah, but that's a bit different, though. It's, no, it is different. You just said that um, he didn't kill. That what 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 my point is is the second Doctor. I don't think <laughs> I, I don't think he's capable of killing. Well, First, maybe. Second, no. no. I mean, again, and and again, to to back up my argument about the first being able to kill, look at the the, the very first story, and an early child with 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 the cavemen. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he was stopped, but he was capable of it. That's the difference. The second doctor's never shown any any inkling of that. Really? Since. I mean, he killed some Cybermen before. He's killed some so, ice warriors. I mean, so yeah. I, no, I d- disagree, and he's gonna have to make her. Uh, die. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, I'm mm. I'm interested to see to see what they do with it. Why, why not? I mean, why not? Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Well, yeah, it's because 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 it. Yeah, but dude, it's probably only gonna be for one story. So what's the problem? Because what's the issue? Her, leave her alone. Just leave her alone. She died sacrificing herself. That's enough. Leave the character alone. I mean, it would be make more sense if they brought back Dodo, or uh, you know, even Stephen or anybody, but not Katarina. No, it, it doesn't make any sense. It's just it's just like let, let's just have fun with the Doctor Who universe. No, no, it, there are certain things that happen, and they Which have to like. happen. They always um, will happen. And so uh, I, and I, 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 yeah, but that's well, why not? I mean, there's still. Well, well, I guess we'll just see how it goes. Yeah. It could be shit. It could be good. I'm going to go with B. A, I, I, a, I yeah. personally am quite interested to see how, how, how they handle it, actually. <laughs> well, I'm not. I, so, I, I bought it. Mm. I am hoping that it's a good story, but you know what? I have my serious doubts. I'm really kind of annoyed with it. Again, maybe it's just because Dalek's Master Plan is probably one of my favorite stories of all time in all of new and classic Who. Who? The reviews of starting with the main range, yes, I'm going to say that because I'm that petty, of uh, dating back from uh, February 2019, which is an actual two-part story, Black Thursday and Power Game, which is release number 248. This features Peter Davison as the fifth doctor, <laughs> Janet Fielding as Tegan, and Mark Strickson as Turlo, and... I will say, again, I think we've made mention of this before, but I really do appreciate John Colshaw's reprisal of Chameleon. I think mm. he does a fantastic <clears throat> job. And I'm also looking forward to him playing the brig, I must admit. Yes. Uh, now that I've actually heard the third Doctor trailer, it does sound quite cool. See, part of me would, would have wanted um, just it to be Black Thursday. I, mm-hmm. I really, really wish it had just been Black Thursday yes. because it would have been nice just to have kind of a, a kind of a historical okay <coughs> even though chameleon was in it it was the better of the two stories Definitely. um it, it 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 was just nice to have a, a historical that you know i didn't know anything about you know the, the fact that, that that actually happened and and uh, you know it is cemented in history and it was yeah it was quite hard hitting you know Power game again started off interestingly, but it just went by that shit, didn't it? Mm. After episode one, it just was just like I swear someone had, had you know had basically it was like chalk and cheese. You know, episode one, the writer was stone cold sober. Episode two, by this point, he dropped LSD and acid and just thought, yeah, let's go nuts because <laughs> it literally made no sense. Like, yeah. uh, I, I, I mean, did you understand that story in the no. end? Because uh... it was just bloody weird. I actually have not listened to Power Game because I could not stand Black Thursday. No. Oh. I what was, thought, wrong with, what was wrong with Black Thursday? I thought Black Thursday was immensely dull. I could not get into it one bit. And I mean, here's my problem and we we talked about this on the previous what was it Devil in the Mist? Mm-hmm. Uh, which was 247. 
Chameleon as a companion is really difficult to write for because there's only one thing that he can really do, and that is basically being taken over by the strongest willed person around. Yes. And obviously, he got taken over, oddly enough, by Tegan's paranoia of the devil, uh, the, the mist creature. But with this story, it just... Uh, again, it was an event in history that I didn't know that happened, which is interesting. That being said, unlike the Peterloo Massacre, which blew me away, this was just one of those somber stories where everybody just kind of was like, I can't believe so-and-so died. I mean, he was here one minute, and now he's not. And it just, I'm like, Whoa. and then Chameleon just kept on trying to, ass like, trying to assume the identity of this person and they're trying to convince him not to do it. And I was just like, this is going nowhere. Mm -hmm. This is absolutely going nowhere at all. And I got all the way through the first episode. I started listening to the second and I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. And then I got online just to see if what other people thought, because who knows, maybe I'm a cold callous person. And yes, um, yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that, that brings joy to my heart. Thank you. Um, but, and so then I started reading people's how reviews. What? I said, how it's frozen. Anyway, <laughs> <hang on. laughs> uh, um, <clears throat> but I started reading people's reviews and I, to me, here's the, I, I, I felt less cow cold as a human being, either that, or there's more of me around because to me, it, uh, when I read reviews, it was either, people would rate it two out of 10 for being really kind of dull and kind of went nowhere or 10 out of 10 because of the immense human drama surrounding it. Again, I do like human drama. I do enjoy watching period pieces and whatnot and learning from uh, historical fiction. But to me, the story just was dull and uninteresting. And then I read some reviews for the power game and people said, well, if you thought that black, the people that, reviewed like two out of 10 for black Thursday. He's like, well, if you thought, uh, black Thursday was horrible, wait until you listen to this one. And I was like, well, I'm done. <laughs> it's essentially the companion time away from the doctor where uh -huh. he's either on ho or doing this or doing that, or he's gone off there. For example, the scorchies is almost like episode four of a, f or episode three of a four parter where the uh, things have already yeah. take, taken place, and now Joe is kind of doing her... Th oh, crap. Now it's... Like <laughs> 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 doing your thing, yep. <laughs> you, you hate the episode, but you always come back to it. I'm sorry, you, but you can't deny it. Seriously, you, honestly, you secretly like it, really. Because <laughs> you, you always go back to that. Uh, Humphrey, anyway. have, have, you, have you listened to the Scorchies yet? <laughs> So you're not even denying it. <laughs> I, I've listened to it. I, <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I meant Humphrey. Oh, I uh, dude, you, you have to. It's it's quite special. It's, um, it's not as bad as me and Liam thought it was going to no, be. No, no. It, it's see, I, I hate musicals, but it is actually one of those ones that's like quite catchy, and you think actually I hate musicals, but this isn't actually too bad. Like I can forgive it. It's weird. It's it's wacky. And the the guy who's kind of like the puppet master. Uh huh. Yeah. Sounds like sounds like Jimmy Savile, hmm. which is even more scary considering the connotations. <laughs> and it, it's quite freaky, uh, especially if you don't like puppets. Uh, um, Scorchies is horrible though. But, yeah, um, mm. I think so. I think uh, to me that story, if if I were to list the most unlistenable or relistenable stories. And what was it? Uh, in the past podcast, you guys have talked about how with the natural history of fear is probably one oh, of those God. like horrible stories. I would rather listen, be forced to listen to the natural history of fear for three days straight no. than listen to uh, Encore no. of the Scorchies one more time. The Facebook fan page was uh, talking about the, nat the worst release. Oh, yes. Oh, I love that. I was... I. I I giggled and screamed out loud, threw down my arm, and just said, yes, yes, thank you. Thank you for justifying 
No, the worst story <laughs> in Big Finish release is a minuet in hell. No, it is not. It is. It is really not. I was so glad to to read so many people agree with me. I loved it. It isn't particularly good, but it's certainly not the worst. <laughs> See, I've, always of, had, I've, I've always had a quite a soft spot for, for, for Minuet. It, well, here's so the funny fair, thing. And it, well, he, he, here, here's my question regarding a Minuet in Hell. Because do you have a soft spot because the Brig is in it? Because no. that's the only per- the no. reason why people say that a minuet in hell is at, at all worth listening to. All right, the weird. Oh, okay, the weird sort of new Colonel state. Sanders. No, I mean the the whole weird new state thing is strange. Yeah, like you know the fact that America's even getting a getting another state is very odd. No, I I quite like it because it it it, it took risks. I mean the fact that basically you know Charlie has to basically dress up as a prostitute is quite dark, you know? It's, well, it's all I'll say bad, is but... one of my favorite things that I saw on the Big Finish listeners page is listening to a minuet in hell. One minute is a minute in hell of a minuet in hell. I <laughs> love that. I cackled so loud that I think somebody <laughs> thought that I had finally gone insane. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> anyway, we're not reviewing a minuet in the hell. And whenever we do our uh, first fifty big finish uh, re- release release, I'm making you listen to that one. I will not listen yep. to that one. Yep. Nope. Yep. Sorry. Yep. Yep. Not you've just you've you've, hey, you've just you've just so like you, you volunteered. You, <laughs> you get a grab a plane ticket. Fly to Utah. <laughs> G- uh, you're gonna have to. Uh, no, Super, uh, it's, it, it's not to, worth the brand. To, you're gonna have you can to get stuffed. No, you're, you're you're gonna have to stun me. You're gonna have to tie me to a chair, <laughs> super glue headphones to my ears, and then push play. And even then, I think I'd probably be trying to swallow my tongue. <laughs> I will happily do that. <laughs> okay, well, it's a date then. Um, <laughs> do you know it'd be a, a funny twist on this uh, if we did this again or for a future mm-hmm. podcast is each one of us selecting a thing for the other one to listen to <laughs> i think i'd dread what i'd be asked to listen to so who the choice and is. The, oddly the only thing i could ever think of for a hump in hell oh, or, or, oh the only thing i could is from mars anyone you know what? I would rather listen to uh, uh, Invasion from Mars than Minuet in Hell. <laughs> All I could say is the only thing I could think for Humphrey would be Season of Fear. Or not Season of Fear. Uh, the um, Natural History. Natural History. Natural history yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. That's dreadful. Yeah, yeah. The Seasons of Fear is fantastic. Yeah. No. I was like, wait. No. That's not dreadful. What? <laughs> <laughs> like, we're good with Ryan. I mean, he, he, I mean, he, yeah, he made a mince, he, he made a, he made a mince with his dad and uh, everything's squared away. Everything's fine. And now we can move on with Ryan Sinclair and he can go get married. And, um, Do you know what I want to see? I just, I just want to, I just want to like have him like do the show, but like off screen. That would just, that, that would just, suit ooh. Me. In in do, in the Doctor Who universe, we call that doing a dodo. Yes. <laughs> doing a dodo, <laughs> yeah. and that's not in a sexual way either. That sounds like yeah. a complete euphemism. <laughs> doing a dodo. <laughs> Even that offer a term for like a really big, like you know, Cleveland uh, Cleveland steamer. Uh, <laughs> you know, doing steamer. a dodo. Yep. I oh, mean, a, a defecation. Third, yeah. Yeah, third. A, a, a clanger, a Henry. A wicked, yeah. I, I just imagine, I'm just going to go and do a dodo. Fuck. <laughs> no. Let's get with Liam's favorite that he's been tweeting and Facebooking about. Uh, Dark Shadows Bloodline. I think all of them have now come out, have, correct? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, what are your thoughts? Um, I really liked it. I'm interested to see where it goes next. Um, my only 
concern is the motorcycle that's going to hit Humphrey. Have, have they written? <laughs> have they written themselves into a corner? Was it the nine? I think I've said on previous podcasts I was just about done with the whole Ravenous series because it was going nowhere. Ravenous was nowhere to be found except for in the I guess eighth adventure of ravenous and the the fourth story in box set two and i hating krampus and mm. and really only enjoying uh the caldor story wasn't enough for me to keep on going until they announced on big finish day that there was going to be a companion piece with uh the best eighth doctor companion ever charlotte pollard and which basically forced my hand into buying it and listening to it. Mm -hmm. And I will say the companion piece was great. I really do wish that it would have been a little bit more of like, you know, story one, Charlotte and the doctor story two, Levchenka and Helen with the doctor story three bliss with the doctor. And then story four, like an amalgamation of certain events kind of, yeah, coming together. But you know what? Even though that's what I was hoping for, what they actually did was actually much better. So I really have no room to complain. Yeah. Yes. That guy who just speeded up your street really had room to complain. He just decided to leave altogether. Yes. Huh. I guess you're, you're glad you uh, continue with it then. I am. And one of these days I'm going to get around to maybe finishing listening to the second Krampus story and the uh, fourth story in the second box set because uh, I, that's where I gave up. Okay. I hate that Krampus story so much. It's a good story, though. There are, there, oh, there, there are, there are worse stories, Steve. Trust me. The, you're, you're right. The, Encore the, of the Scorchies the, the, is pretty bad. No, the uh, fourth Doctor demon, ri you know, demon rises and, and that one. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't even finished the, exactly, the second like, story like, to that one. <laughs> like, like, exactly, like, like that's probably like one of the only few stories I just can't finish. So if it's a toss-up between that and the Krampus, I'll take the Krampus. <laughs> Hands down. Oh, my God, that was boring. So what would, yeah. What would you give uh, Ravidus box set three? 7.5, 8 out of 10. I'd say 8 hmm. out of 10. I agree with that. I'd say eight out of ten. That's I, it's. If it wasn't for the Brothers Grimm story, I think it would be a nine. But yes. I think that one story kind of drug it down just a little bit. Uh, the last release is the Unit Incursion box set, uh, uh, one that I have not listened to. I, I was looking forward to the River Song portion, I, but I have, and unfortunately, my review is going to be very short and to the point. Meh. <laughs> and I say that because there's been eight box sets of unit and there's been zero character development. Box set one was fantastic. They have not popped it oh, since. Yeah. It's as simple as that. I, well, I've, I've, I've and, really, and the, really, to me, a unit is averagey. It's really average. There's no, there's no peril. There's no stakes. Because you know all the characters have basically got to survive. Yet again, Carter well, comes out on top because, you know, he tries to get, you know, the the static to come back and, you know, I, you know, they try to kill him. It doesn't work because of the orc. And um, mm -hmm. I was a bit annoyed because they just got the brig back and I thought, oh, okay, they might bring the, they might bring the brig back. But no, we don't get the brig coming back. Um, so it was just a bit, bit of a letdown. So, meh. I give it a five, and um, they've also said that they they've put unit on on hold for now, um, and I think that's due. To you know, I, I I'm perfectly fine yeah, with that. I, I am, to be honest with you, as well. So, yeah. Because I mean, if we if we go in order, again, the first one just amazing, absolutely amazing. Second one, second one meh. shut down like ugh. silence is. Probably better than shut down. Yeah. Then the fourth one was what unit assembled, the Sol the Solorian one. Oh yes, it was. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, as unit assembled, and then the then you had the the five standalone stories or the four standalone stories for the next yes. one, 
which the Dalek one was kind of interesting to a point. The rest were. You had the, yeah. And then the next cyber one was reality, Cyber Reality, which, which, which could have been good. The only good one, the only good episode was the fourth one yeah, with the, the Jer- Jer- Jacoby Master. Mm. And then you had the last one, which was uh, brought back uh, the Warren, the singing aliens, and the Korean yeah, Vietnamese the, the, the lady. The Keller mach- the, and the Keller machine. Again, interesting uh, version of the Keller machine, don't get me wrong. But again, just average. There's just no, there's no, there's no plot. Well, no, not, there's, there's no plot. Like I said, there's no character development between, you know, all eight box sets. And there's no, there's no peril. There's no actual, you know, you know everyone's going to survive. And there's, 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 it's just not interesting. No. Which is, I mean, the, the 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 last interesting thing that happened in any of the unit box sets was that gigantic uh, Cyberman spider who engulfed the unit story or soldier and pooped out a a fully converted Cyberman. Yeah. I mean, that was like, <laughs> yes. That was like the best mental image ever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, and and then I, because I was thinking about the cyber reality again, and again, the thing that bothers me the most is Osgood, because she's supposed to be, like, for the longest time, I felt as though she was playing the Cyberman because she was so excited, mm. she was happy, she was looking forward to doing this, and. How could you be controlled by the Cybermen and have the slightest ounce of excitement? I understand that she was not fully converted, which gave her the ability to kind of mm. think, I don't know, more or less outside of the box and human. But everybody else, uh, not Carter, because he, he was the only one that wasn't really under control. But Bishop, he was like, like emotionless. Kate's always emotionless, regardless if she's cyberized or not. But all right, so something I've been looking forward to for about the past two months is this little nugget right here. Whereas I am right, so sit back and enjoy. Previously on Canon, your argument about Canon and parallel universes, Inferno not being Canon. No, I didn't say um, Inferno. Inferno wasn't Canon. No, I didn't. Did. I did not. I said, and then the last one, false negative. Ooh. Ah, yeah, but it didn't happen. Because well, it's a parallel Inferno universe. Inferno happened. Inferno happened. I'll, I'll, I'll acknowledge that. That's canon. All the stuff in between is not canon. It is. Does the prime orbs are going to be in the third doctor? No, that doesn't. That doesn't mean that this is canon. It just means that the continuation of the prime Wards is going on forward. It does not mean that all that stuff in between, unless they were able to jump from that universe which exploded. Obviously, oh. well, well, obviously that they have. How else would you know how they came about? Are you classing the mirror universe? Like, and also what, Voyager, what, what, does that, what does that have to do with Doctor Who? And I'm what trying the, to prove your point in regards to canon and universes. Your point is completely and utterly flawed. It really is. Really? Because I find like, yours yeah. no, <laughs> you're missing flawed. The, please, well, 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 okay then. Well, we'll see in May and see yeah. if, if, if... And I will be and, proven and, right, and, 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 and if, I would like an if, apology if, and, at and that if, time. It's not going to happen. And at that time, you will say, mm. Brett, you were right. I was wrong. That part is not canon. And I'm, no. I'm, I, 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 no, I bow no, at your greatness. Canon. <laughs> Duh. Oh, okay. and, and, and inferno you so had to drag it up, didn't you? you had to drag it up god damn it uh-huh. <laughs> so um yeah i um very excited for uh this review because uh two stories in the third doctor uh adventures volume five uh, Primoid by Prime, John Dorney. Primord. What? Whatever. I knew what I meant. Oid is O I D. Ord is O R D. Like order. Primord. Primoid. And then you have the the Scream of Ghosts by Guy Adams. And just before we begin this, I, I just want to read something that, I, as I was preparing for this last week, I came across, and I absolutely died laughing <laughs> because part of me. Part of me was wondering, even though it was referred to um, social media, 
uh, or not social media, about anyway, I'll read this. So in the Big Finish's new websites, it has about, which gives the synopsis, and then it has a little backstage, which sometimes there's little notes mm, about something. Nothing. And then there's cast, which tells you obviously about the cast, and then production credits. Anyway, on the backstage for this one, writer's notes, Primord or Oid or whatever, oh. Primord, Yay. whatever, by John Dorney. So here's John Dorney writing. So here's a question. In Doctor Who terms, what is a sequel? It is not as straightforward as it might appear. In Dalek Invasion of Earth, a, or is Dalek Invasion of Earth a sequel to the Daleks? Mm. Or is it just another story with the Daleks? For a long time, I didn't really feel I'd done any sequels for Big Finish. I'd played with pre-existing concepts like the Celestial Toymaker and Drax, but very few outright sequels. You see, to me, a sequel follows the same threads, ties, uh, ties the stories together. A sequel should do more than just feature the same characters. It should do the same thing, but different. My first, uh, let's see, my first was probably The Perfect Prisoner. Uh, Primord is definitely my second. It's awfully intimidating doing a sequel to Inferno. I remember finding that story a mind-blowingly good watch when I first encountered it as a young fan back in the 90s. How do you honor that story like that? When people have floated the idea of a sequel, it's always the alternative universe aspect, as not its featured monster. As I was writing this, someone on a big, a not big finished form said it would be impossible to bring the primoids back. I laughed and then cried. They're unexplored, often ignored. So if we're lucky for some, for the same, but different. That seems a good place to go. What makes Primords tick? And what happens when you don't have another universe to escape to? And the instant I read that, I was like, huh, I wonder if this not big Finnish forum that he speaks of was the Twitter thing that <laughs> Liam started. <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Well, uh, I think he because might be I'm, I'm pretty finished, sure though, so he I'll, has so listened I'm, to our podcast. I might. I, I so well. I, I'm. I think he's he's going to be there at Big Finish Day, so I'll I'll, uh, I'll pull him up on that and ask him actually. <laughs> and go, well, yeah. Did you write that, that whole notes thing because of me? <laughs> if you did, I'm sorry. <laughs> um. Uh. No, I I like Primord. Um. So do yeah, I because. I, I, I'm waiting. I am waiting. Uh, it, it, I'll, I'll start you off. What? Brett, you were. Next word starts with an R, oh, ends um, in an I. Right. Ah, I was right. No, yes, I was. No, when? When? Yes, I was. How? You know, you said, no, you said these creatures came from Eyepatch Brigland. And I told you they did not. And you said, well, how could they exist? And I said, they exist because of the things that happened on our Earth. These are not, not outer universe, non-our universe primoids. These are our universe ones. And you argued with me and you said that I, you would be proven right that they came from Eyepatch Brigland. And I said they would not. Meaning that I patch Brigland, as fun of a story as it is, is not part of our universe's canon. It is a fun story. Character development did happen, but they did not bridge our thing. So again, I ask you, Brett, you were uh, wrong because the right. the liquid that makes them primal. Came from, from our universe. No, it did not come from Eyepatch Brickland. I was right. Mm. How about children? Fine, fine. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was an evil laugh. Still, that still. Was, that was a pretty evil it doesn't, laugh. It doesn't, make, it doesn't still mean that, that Inferno isn't part of continuity. And what happens still counts. I... I Towards character development. (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh-oh. I think he's going next anyway. <laughs> oh, oh yes, 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 I have. <laughs> but you know what? I've enjoyed every single moment of it. it um, <laughs> yeah, moving on. Um, Liz. Because, you, you, do you know why I was so excited for this? Because I think you were on your vacation. And I, I even sent you a, a, a tweet saying... I can just listen to the first episode of The Third Doctor. I cannot wait to talk to you about this. And for some reason, you never responded uh, to that. I don't think just, I got it, actually. Uh, oh, well. Huh. <laughs> uh, I just figured it was like a... Uh, no, no. Sorry. Anyway. Um, all right. Liz. Um, a emergency <laughs> podcast, which... Calls back to an initial podcast that we recorded back in December of 2018 when Liam decided to go on one of 75,000 uh, vacations, that, and so we needed a couple things in the tank. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so we're here. I, I, I'm here in the states, across the pond. Who, even though we have difference of opinions, does not mean we shut each other down and try to get each other blocked from Twitter across the pond. Not blocking each other. Wait, I just got blocked from Twitter. <laughs> you dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. That'd be awesome. We have... And Humphrey, hello. Hello. Good evening. Hello. So this dates back to our podcast back in December when we were talking about the toxicity within fandom. And I guess... Whoever is operating the time machine has got to be exterminated. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to do that one, too. I'm going to have to figure out how to... Uh, and so was Donna's mom. It's like, what? That about. But let's be honest, Jacqueline King is like in everything that Big Finish do. You know, she's she isn't just playing God, she is God. <laughs> That's true. You know. <laughs> oh, I forgot that was her. Um, but just whilst we're talking about seamlessly pointless spin offs, mm. I've heard, Brett, that you've produced your own trailer for a spin off. Oh, you heard this thing. Well, I, I I don't want to step on your foot for your foot for your possible this uh, spinoff series, but yes, I have produced my own trailer for a fantastic box set. In fact, I'm actually toying with the idea of trying to figure out how to do a volume two trailer. <laughs> <laughs> so Go for it. So here is, well, I'll just play this. I would give it a 9 out of 10. And talking about Nick Briggs and talking about trailers and talking about one of the best underrated, and I do say this tongue in cheek, <laughs> best underrated 10th Doctor story, Love and Monsters, I have a trailer, a proposed new box set for the Big Finish range. Here's Idea. the trailer and teaser. And I'll, I'll, let me just set this up. Not only are they, are they going to visit, or they're going to be fighting aliens, but there's going to be a side love story in it also. Where, oh, I'll just let play it for you. Okay, here's my proposal to Nick Briggs, Jason Higg Gallery, and the Big Finish Think Tank. Linda, box set volume one. You're listening to a Big Finish production. But the thing is, you know, when you're a kid, they tell you it's all grow up. Exterminate! Exterminate! Get a job. You will be deleted. Get married. I'm flashing you my knickers. <laughs> Get a house. And I said, tell you that the Silurians have long since abandoned the way of mediation. Have a kid, and I say, what brings with the gift of death to all of you? <gasps> truth is, the world is so much stranger than that. Here we are. A little reward for my favourite handyman. It's so much darker. London Investigation mm. Detective Agency. Linda, for short. It's so much madder. It's a relationship of sorts. We manage. We've even got a bit of a love life. Oh, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> we love stories. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> that was 
million. I'll I'll tell you, I sat and tried to figure out how I could possibly do do something for we have a bit of a love life, but when the love interest is a slab of concrete. Jack, how much do you I mean, spectacular? I, I, was, I was holding myself together really well all the way through that. I knew what was coming and it came and I was like, fuck. Coming. Ironic. <laughs> oh, dear. Um. <laughs> ah. I just like that. I love life. <laughs> Well, how do you propose to go around, uh, <laughs> um, you know, kind of stimulating a, a slab of concrete? So, the, to me, the only thing that like made sense would be a jackhammer. So, and if you get bored with it, you just chuck her in the bin. Yeah. that's a thing of beauty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I I'm trying to figure out how to possibly do a volume two. I, it's mm. it's it, it, the the sad part about it is in order to come up with the first initial idea, I had to watch Love of Monsters like three times <laughs> oh. to figure things out. <laughs> and so I. <laughs> I'm not sure how how many times I can watch uh, Love and Monsters again for a volume two, but uh, uh, let's just say I'm the, the wheels are turning. <laughs> Love it. Um, so you're uh, you're you're so, uh, tarmacking the road in preparation, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. That's uh, my uh, rather bad impression of a jackhammer. Yeah. Great. The sound design was great. And I love the guns. I love the guns. Yes. Oh, please. Bring them back because they are they are the best sounding type of weapon. <laughs> I think. <laughs> that was a car that literally a car backfiring on <laughs> on that dude's love interest. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> um I think something came up about a couple weeks ago on the Big Finish fan page i both love i have a love hate relationship with that fan page i love when certain controversial things get brought up i hate so on july 24th 2019 and a really interesting thread occurred on the big finish listeners group i have pre-recorded this to make sure that a it still exists because it could have totally been taken down by the time we actually do our podcast b i've forgotten a couple of things and C, I just want to have certain things in order that will kind of help contribute to a dialogue. So it says, listening to Gallifrey Intervention Earth, this is what started it off. In regards to the casting choice of Juliet Landor as Romana Three, what was Big Finish thinking? She sounds as if she were acting under the effects of anesthesia, an utterly lifeless and bland performance, especially considering the pedigree of the character and those who did embodied it in the past. I hate to be blunt, but she is awful. And I enjoy appreciate that the next post from somebody was very kind of comical. Don't worry. Braxy tells got your back <laughs> by the next story, which means Ramana three totally removed, which I do find funny. And I also would like my money back. And then I love that the next post says, couldn't agree more. I recall her blandy now. And this is why I'm doing the, the homework is because this person says, I, I recall, I don't want to recall. I want to know. I recall her blandy talking about how she thinks ACE betrayed her. And so I really want to get, and I love that, that we got some disagreement. There was no um, negativity. It was just, I disagree, or I agree that she is not good. And then I, and then somebody said, I didn't mind it. I didn't mind her portrayal. And I, I love that it's going back and forth. Some people jump in. Uh, Lala can't stand her. Well, I, I think Lala is the best uh, incarnation of Ramana too. And... But here's where it gets quite interesting because somebody popped in and said, curious as to why this post was allowed, but similar posts I've made in the past, and I need to probably start following this gentleman because if he's trying to do some controversial stuff, I want to read it uh, because uh, previous posts in the past that I've made have been removed. 
and admin jumps in. I can't recall the content of any of your posts, but he replies, the policy of this group is to not dissuade negative comments about Big Finish. BS. They don't always get it right. Uh, I would agree with that. On occasion, we'll spot a post that just doesn't seem like it's going to spawn any great conversation nor be enjoyable to read. I find this post enjoyable to read. However, if you fast forward a couple of other things, the last post, it gets capped off about eight hours later, saying in light of a couple of private messages to the admin and comments here, and there's at least, unless neg- horrible comments were made and removed, I, which I haven't seen, admin came in, swooped in and said, we are drawing this discussion to a close. All right. And now discuss. So that was the initial post. W- w- what am I missing? Yeah. Rude. Yes. Just, you know, there, 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 there was no need. There so wait, no wait, need. wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's not attacking the actress at all. It's the performance. It's if like you go to, into a movie and be like, you know what? That's a great story. But you know what? Bozo, the actor over there, kind of ruined it. If you would have put anybody, including a broom, in his place, it would have been a much better product. That's his opinion. It's, it's, it's not bullying, though. No, but that, no, yeah, but that is bullying though, because I mean, it's not the, it's not. Yeah. Really? Did 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 he attack her personally? Yeah. No, he didn't. Is she a part of the group? Yes or no? I don't know. I, probably no. I'm gonna guess no. And here, here's my biggest problem with the Big Finish listeners group. They have people associated with the show in there, on the group. And here's the thing. It's supposed to be a discussion thing. This is part of a discussion. If you have somebody whose feelings could be hurt, you either have the choice to A, do what I've been doing recently with Twitter and just muting a lot of things because I don't want it in my life, or B, leave the discussion group altogether because it's a discussion group, not a we all like things group because that would be the most dull group to be around in Facebook, in Twitter, or uh, in real life. I think that would be the most dull thing is let's agree yes upon everything. I think it was an interesting topic. I really do. I have no problem with what was being said. Do I agree with them? Well, I listened to Gallifrey Intervention Earth. I will say, Jill Landor's performance, she is not in the realm of Louise Jameson, Louise Jameson is acting like her acting circles around her. The guy who plays Narvin acting circles around her. Romana th- two acting circles around her. I just feel as though when you are in that pedigree of, I guess you could say royalty of Doctor Who and you come in and play a character that is associated with somebody who is well loved and your performance isn't close to what other people do. It's okay it's to say that, that it's <clears throat> not that great. Not that he said it wasn't that great. I had a problem with it. It was the language was very attack. It, it's, the, it's the language that's more attacking than. And that's what I meant. It, it's the whole. Yes, it's, it's the not, whole, You know, the, you know the whole oh under synesthesia blah 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 blah. It's, it's not. That's good. an opinion. Cool. I I have no problem with it. In fact, my my biggest problem was that the group ended the discussion. Because I think that there could have been a really interesting discussion that follows that. And people's feelings were getting hurt on behalf of Juliet Landor, who probably 99.9% sure she's not part of the group. Her, that people's, and here's the problem that I see. People are just looking to be offended. I found that, I found that this group, that thread, more interesting than most of the content on that group. And then the, to me, the, mo- the annoying thing is the more interesting something is, the more likely it's, the discussion is going to be stopped, blocked, and done with. Yeah. See, see when, I, when, when I first read it, I was, I was offended for her. But, yeah. you know, thinking about it, and I mean, we're all, we're all going to differ on our opinions on this. Um, 
some of the things that were said could have been could have been written a lot more mm. tactfully. But then again, it's it's that case of reading something on the internet and depending on your frame of mind you can read some a completely different context it's like for example you may have read it brett and it would have been you know oh yeah that's fine you know whereas me liam and humphrey for example we we use voiceover or jaws or mvda or whatever you want to use mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. and you just get the mechanical input and I just found it really, really mm. offensive. But thinking about it con- contextually, the internet, when you're on the internet, it's, it's a place where lots of people go to get offended these days. And I think it, you're yeah. right. It's probably all due to con- you know, reading into the text that is text. not being said. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah I mean, exactly. I, know, I, you know, I, I have a hard time with, with text anyway. Like I... I can read an article and, and understand it, but when it comes to social media posts, sometimes it's again, uh, I'm like, my sarcasm is completely wasted on you. Yep, <laughs> it really is. <laughs> like, on a, honestly, I've texted before and I've just been so blasé, and I've had phone calls. What do you mean by that? I was being sarcastic. <laughs> you fart. Uh... Or really, did that thing happen? No. No, it didn't. <laughs> That's why I do audio. That's why I prefer audio because I can get you kind of, I can get you context. Text is just like, yeah. Ah, well, which is funny because yeah. I will say when we were talking, and this kind of goes into one of the reviews that we're going to be doing regarding the War Master, I texted you, Liam. I'm like, can I skip? Because I got. It was halfway through episode one of the War Master Volume Three, and I was just bored, senseless. And I text you, "Can I miss skip this?" And you, at the time, you didn't reply. So then I just was on a walk, and so I was like, "Well, what do I want to listen to? The sounds of cars passing by, or this audio?" So I went with the audio. So I listened to it. I felt as though it was boring. Then I I started listening to episode two, and I'm just like, "I don't like this at all." And so I text Liam, can I skip episode two altogether? And through the uh, play, the, the audio recording of your voice, you were, you were just so bland. Well, the American accent isn't that bad. So just listen to it. And I was like, well, I didn't even say anything about the American accent. What, what are you I talking about? Well, and so then I, I, so then I text back. I go, Hey, Liam, I didn't say anything about the tech, the, the uh, accent. I just find this story horrible. Can I skip it? And then I get this audio recording back. Uh, we have to record or we have to do a review. So if you don't want to review, then and I'm like uh, <laughs> that, that wasn't what I was asking. Can I skip episode two? And for some reason, you you gave me every single thing under the sun <laughs> except an answer to my question. Yeah, I know, I know you though. Whenever there's like American actors in it, you're like, oh god, not again. <laughs> so it's just like you know what? <laughs> Where, be- Derek recording. Jacoby's American accent was not good oh, it's awful. the it's other awful. guy who was the main american who actually isn't american did a fine job yes, yeah sir. did i did i yes, see sir. through his accent yes i did was the american accent guy who was actually from america was his accent okay oh, i sure hope so but <laughs> <laughs> I, mean... I can give you i can give you a definitive answer to the question that you posed to liam though now brett oh that, well, I've already would, listened would, to him. Would but... you? Would you like okay, that give, answer? Give me a... <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There's an answer for it. He doesn't sound that old now. No, he doesn't. Did Did you guys see on Twitter the other day when um, Ian Levine basically, oh, no, I think, again. probably said something stupid and. Then <laughs> all the fans basically attacked him for the most part. I'd, I'd have to say 95 per- Well, I wouldn't say 95%. I would say every single fan who enjoyed maybe a, a handful of, of uh, Series 11 episodes attacked him. Right. 
goodness. And I'll, I'll, all I'll say is I'll, I'll I'll share with you the 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 tweet that he made, but it was uh-huh. one word. <clears throat> Had he not included one word. He, he wouldn't have been attacked as badly as he did. Uh, let's see if you can right. figure out the word that he used. So th- this happened on August 10th. It says, I honestly believe if the BBC knew how much everybody hates the current show, they'd get rid of the whole stagnant melanoma. No, my worry is they might get rid of the show itself. All it needs is someone like Mark Gatiss or Neil Gaiman or best of all, Joe... Stasinski or whatever to take over. Any idea which word got everybody riled up? Melanoma. Melanoma. Nope. Melanoma. Nope. Stagnant. Stagnant. Nope. Eight. Nope. Everyone. The instant he, the instant I read that, I was just like, "Oh, don't you dare say everyone uh, likes that and hates that," because. After he got attacked on Twitter for probably about a good three, four hours, he came (laughs) back and then he in in bold said everyone who I have spoken to. So So what was the word? Sorry, that the people were attacking him over everyone, everyone, Uh, because he he basically said everyone hates the show now taught everyone with the same brush and so basically just, just a massive generalization yeah well it was a generalization but you know it, the, the, the sad thing is is i read that and i knew he wasn't speaking on my behalf yet was series 11 mm. the greatest no but when no. you know in the po- in the yeah. podcast and on twitter we all i know <clears throat> you and me liam kind of ranked all the series of new who and series <sighs> 11 isn't at the bottom it's not no but for some reason, when it's clo- you put it's close the, to it, but it's but not. It's it, not it is. Yeah. But w- when you put everyone, the word everyone in there, if you are not part of everyone and for some reason in society, we cannot accept that he's just making a overgeneralization. We must attack. It's just the weirdest thing ever. Heard the statement. That was really good karaoke. It's always really bad karaoke. So just shorten it to just <laughs> yeah, karaoke. Yeah, you you, you've, you've, seen, you've seen America's Got Talent. No, I haven't. American I Idol. choose not to. <laughs> oh. I, I choose never to watch that show ever unless my wife, who doesn't currently exist right now um, in this reality, <laughs> if she would like to say, hey, let's watch America's Got yeah, Talent. Brett, yeah, but Brett, she's not canon. That's right, she's not. She's not part of this universe. <laughs> nope. <laughs> this is true. I'm very excited for this one. And so is Liam. Samuel Adams is Danny Pink. And Ingrid Oliver as Osgood. <laughs> you, uh, Samuel Adams? You mean, uh, is, it, is it Anderson? Anderson? Sa- Sa- oh, sorry. Samuel yes. Anderson, sorry. Anderson, yeah. <coughs> Joy. Well, let's hope Big Finish can actually... Uh... Make his character likable, Joey. Now, yes. if if Big Finish does that, Big Finish can do anything. In fact, if Big Finish can do that, they, <laughs> they've they've saved so many things that I'm going to go out on a limb. If this is possible, I'm going to say Big Finish in the future will cure cancer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which kind uh, you say? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> all right and the the last big finish news that i have is it was announced in september of this year that the last war master box set anti-genesis will feature the war master versus the mark gatiss master and yes 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 uh, awesome <laughs> uh uh, I was so right, wasn't I? You were. In fact, you, <laughs> uh, in one, uh, in, if you go back and listen to episode, I want to say 34, I believe it's one of the first ones that we did with Legion the first time around. You even talk about this. It's either 30, <laughs> episode 34 or 35. You talk about this moment right here. Except I don't think you say the uh, War Master, but you do say that. The Mark Gatiss Master will meet either the Alex McQueen Master or another incarnation of the Master. So, awesomely, hmm. Legion, Liam <laughs> is able to predict the future. 
So if you would like to listen to more per, uh, Liam predictions of the future, listen to some of our earlier podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <coughs> Doctor Who dudes. Oh, no, I'm, 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 I'm really excited for that. Mm. That would be really cool. Um, one of the ones that made me laugh out loud, and <laughs> was a big Finnish lunch menu collection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh dear, uh, and it's and happened. we've lost something. <laughs> yep. <laughs> A big finish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was. <laughs> I really enjoyed that one. And then they said uh, a revival of the Unbound stories, uh, Australia, Australia set stories, and then he has a whole. You have been listening to the Doctor Who Alhambra podcast. Doctor Who is owned and trademarked by the BBC. Doctor Who Alhambra is not affiliated with the BBC or Big Finish. No infringement is intended. Visit our website at alhambrapodcast.weebly.com or email the show at alhambraaudio at gmail.com. Tweet us at alhambrapodcast. That is A-L-H-A-M-B-R-A podcast. Thank you.